Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. If you're looking to play Star Wars The Old Republic with a friend, there's a lot you can do together while playing. In this video, we'll be going over everything you need to know about playing with a friend, and everything you can do together in-game. The Old Republic is a great game to play with a second person, especially if you start together at level 1. You can work directly together on many quests in the game, and help each other out on the ones that aren't directly meant for groups. You can also work together on the group content, including the 4-person flashpoints, 8-person operations at high levels, player versus player content, and go exploring across the galaxy to find datacrons, lore objects, and secret achievements. If you're looking to play the main quest line together from level 1, there are some important things you need to know about choosing a class. Although the rest of the game works perfectly for questing together, the class quests are designed to allow you to be the star of the story, and you cannot directly complete your class quests together, but you can help each other and watch each other's class stories. If you're both the same class, for example you're both playing Jedi Knights, you cannot go into the Jedi Knight story quest and complete it together. Instead, you have two options. You can each do your Jedi Knight quest separately, or you can have both players do it together for the first player, then both players to do it together for the second player. A much better option story-wise is to choose a different class than your friend. Then they can join you for your story, and you can join them for theirs. You won't get any rewards or XP for coming along for their class quests, and they won't get any for yours, but you do get the benefit of experiencing two different class stories, which are often considered the best content in the entire game. To play with a friend, you must choose classes that are part of the same faction, Republic or Empire. If you want to start on the same planet, you'll want to pick up classes that can start together at level 1. Otherwise, you'll have to wait until your first planet to meet up at roughly level 10. Troopers and smugglers start together, agents and bounty hunters start together, and the two types of Jedi and Sith start together on their respective homeworlds. While picking characters, you may also want to consider roles for group activities like flashpoints later on. For example, pairing up as one healer role and one tank role will help you with grouping up later on. If you're playing with a group of four, the ideal setup for group flashpoints later in the game will be one healer, one tank, and two damage dealers. This does not mean you have to stick to these roles while leveling, it's just good to have those roles available for later group content. Once you're actually in-game, you'll want to create a group. If you can see your friend, click on their character, then right-click their character portrait and choose Group, Join Group from the menu. You can also right-click their portrait and choose Additional Commands, Add to Friends list, if you want to better see when they come on and offline. If you cannot see your friend yet, you'll need to type this in chat, slash, invite, a space, then their character name exactly how they spelled it when they first created their character. They'll then be prompted to join your group. Once you're in a group, you'll be able to see your group members on the side of your screen and on your minimap in purple if you're on the same map. Once you're in a group, you also get a special group-only chat in blue. You can type slash group into the chat box, and then when you're typing in blue, you'll be sending messages just to your group and other players won't see your messages. If you're finding the group messages get lost in the clutter of the yellow messages, you can turn the yellow messages off by right-clicking the general chat tab Choose Chat Settings and uncheck System Feedback near the bottom of the list. There's also one specific setting you'll both want to toggle in the game's preferences in the Social section, called Allow Access to Same Class Personal Phase. This allows you to enter certain quests together that you wouldn't be able to normally. If you're looking to run all the quests in the game, including the side quests, you'll want to turn on another setting to show the side quests by both opening up your map with the M key on your keyboard and check marking Show Exploration Missions. Exploration quests are not mandatory, but their cutscenes are often set up to allow multiple characters. This is a great option to turn on if you want to be able to do more quests together fully as you play. In most normal quests, as long as you meet the level requirements, you and your friend should be able to enter them together. You both right-click the quest giver, and when both of you are engaged, you can start the quest cutscene together. If someone is not eligible, they'll show up as a grey X, or if they're not engaged yet, they'll show up as an orange question mark, and the first player can start the conversation when they're ready. If one player is near the quest giver and the other is far away, one player can right-click the quest giver and the other player can join in by holocall if they're eligible for the quest. 
The only time it gets a little awkward when running class quests and normal questing is for any quests that take place over Holocom, but luckily a majority of these quests do not use this feature. You should be able to play this way until two of the later expansions, Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne, which are not friendly to co-op players. You can still play them together, it's just a bit trickier, and I've posted a link in the description of this video with more info about how to handle these two expansions. If you and your friend were playing independently and wanted to group up later, it can be a bit tricky. For example, if you're level 50 and your friend is only level 15, when you go to join them on their quest stories, you'll probably find out that you cannot join them on their quests as you've already completed many of them. There will be some you can do, for example any repeatable dailies, heroics, or bonus series, but most of the other quests are one time only per character. And the good news is, is that if you do find some quests that you can complete together, you'll still get rewarded even though you're too high of a level for that planet or area, in return for being made slightly less powerful in combat. This is called level sync. A great activity to do with two or more players are heroics. Heroics are repeatable quests that give great rewards. If you're on a low level character, you'll get a box of gear for your character and XP, and if you're on a high level character, they're one of the fastest ways to make credits in the game. If you aren't planning to do traditional questing with a friend like doing the class quests, heroics are a great choice. There are three ways to pick up heroic quests, naturally as you come across them while questing, from the activity window, or from the terminal on the fleet. The easiest way to pick them up is using the activity window, but it's best for high level characters and for low level characters will actually hide a lot of the quests available. You can open the activity window by clicking the icon of three little people near your minimap. Click the solo tab at the top of the panel and pick up a planet's heroics that you both have access to by clicking the green travel button, which will load you right in front of the heroics terminal. Completing all the heroics on a planet this way also gives you some bonus XP and credits. If you're low level and not seeing a lot of quests available on the activity window, once you have finished your first planet and gotten to the Republic or Imperial fleet at about level 10 or so, there's a blue terminal in the combat training section of the fleet where you can pick up all heroic quests that are available to you, including ones that normally wouldn't have access to, including heroics that you would need a ship to get to, even if you don't have one yet. When picking up quests from the heroics terminal, pick ones that you both have access to, as you'll have different options based on your level and your starter planet. If the quest is in red, it means it isn't recommended for your level, but if you have a higher level member in your group, it might be fine, just make sure they're protecting the low level character. Red heroics do reward extra XP compared to the yellow or orange ones that are within your level range. Heroics are especially nice to do together as they offer a direct shuttle to the heroic once you've picked them up from the terminal. When you have the quest showing up in your quest panel, you can click the heroic shuttle icon to travel directly there. Just let your partner know how to use the shuttle icon and meet him there. If you accidentally get stuck on a planet because you don't have your ship yet, Press P to open your abilities and in the general tab use the emergency fleet pass which will shuttle you back to the fleet. If you're finding heroics are a bit too tough or you're looking for some more story focused quests, the bonus series is a great option as they are now repeatable unlike most story quests. Players can pick up the bonus series on their characters once they have finished their class story for that planet, so you just need to pick a planet that you've both already finished. There's a bonus series on Alderaan, Balmora, Belsavis, Hoth, Narshada, Terrace, Tatooine, and Voss. While these bonus series don't offer any special rewards, they do give good credits, XP, and additional story you can play together. If you want to run the bonus series, I have a separate guide that shows you how to start each one linked in the description of this video. If you're looking to run high-level solo content together, I highly recommend dailies. Dailies are a type of repeatable quests that are meant to be done multiple times to earn some cool rewards over time. Many of the high-level dailies offer some really cool cosmetic rewards including armor, weapons, mounts, and decorations by working your way up the reputation track for that set of dailies. Some of the planets you could choose to work on together include Makeb, Yavin 4, Rishi, Osis, Orkon, CC198, Voss, Onderon, Iocath, Section X, and the planet-spanning GSI quests, the Zayas dailies, and the Mech Shaw additional quests. If you've both done up to Chapter 9 of Knights of the Fallen Empire, you can also try out the group version of the Eternal Championship Dueling Tournament. It just doesn't give the same rewards as a solo version does. You should also check out if there are any events running currently, including the Agree event, Rackle event, Bounty event, Dantooine event, or the upcoming Swoop event, as they also have great reward tracks you can work together to complete. If you and your friend like exploring, there's also a lot of secrets you can uncover together. 
The most common ones are called Datacrons. They're artifacts hidden on almost every planet that give you a permanent boost to your stats when you find them. You can see which ones you found by pressing the Y key on your keyboard to open the Legacy panel, then click Datacrons on the left. Once you've figured out which ones you want to hunt down, there's lots of guides online to get you going. If you really like hunting for secrets, almost every planet also has secret lore objects hidden as well. You can see which ones you're missing by opening the legacy panel and going to the location section of the achievements on the left. And then digging around until you find the achievement that shows lore objects, usually in the exploration section for that planet. There's also achievements for fully unlocking the original maps in the game, hunting down unique creatures, or going on secret treasure hunts across the galaxy. Players looking to play with friends also check out Flashpoints. Flashpoints are designed to be played with a group of four players and can be a lot of fun to do in a group. Many of them also exist outside the main storylines and are a great option to do together for players that are completing their main quest stories independently. This is because most of Flashpoints have a level range of level 15 to level 75 and allow a group of four with mixed levels to play together. For example, if your friend is only level 30, they can join you for flashpoints even if you're max level. These mixed level 15 to 75 flashpoints are known as veteran flashpoints and can vary widely in difficulty, so don't be too discouraged if your newbie team got demolished in some of the more difficult ones. There are two ways to enter a veteran mode flashpoint, either by walking up to the terminal together in game, so you can both see the introductory cutscene together, or by using the activity window. There are some issues you may run into when trying to queue up using the group finder or when walking into a flashpoint together, especially if one of your group members has already been picking up some flashpoint quests along the way. The first common issue can be fixed by having all players right-click their own character portrait and choose Phase Reset All Active Flashpoints. This setting may or may not be available depending on the character. This one usually happens when one player has partially started a flashpoint and the game doesn't know what to do about the second player jumping in part way, so you can reset it to the beginning from your character portrait. The second problem that might come up is you can only have one version of a flashpoint picked up at any given time, so if you're having trouble picking up the veteran mode together, have each player go through their quest log by pressing L on the keyboard for log, Go to the missions tab at the top, and if there are any flashpoint quests, click them and then click abandon button at the bottom of the panel. The rest of the issues that crop up are usually related to your level compared to the level of the flashpoint. Flashpoints are designed for groups of four. If you need help putting together a group of four players, you can use the group finder to be paired up with other random players who are looking to run a flashpoint. To open the group finder, click the symbol of three little people near your minimap and then the group tabs and make sure veteran flashpoints are selected. The group finder will limit you to flashpoints that thinks are appropriate for your level, and you can select and remove which flashpoints you want to jump into by using the filter button, which is also useful to look and see what you have available for your group. If you have a full group of four, you will immediately be placed into a flashpoint, but if you're short, the group finder will try and match you up with other players to make a full four person group. If you're not queuing with a group of four friends, please make sure to learn about group finder etiquette before jumping in. There are a lot of things you should know before playing with other random players, as the expectations are a lot different than when you're goofing off with a group of four people you already know. Although the group finder will limit your group to flashpoints it thinks are appropriate for your level, if your group walks up to the flashpoints quest giver in the open world, you can still pick up the quest and walk into the flashpoint together even if it's not available in the group finder that way. Using the quest givers and terminals can also be more fun for groups, as you can get some introductory story for the flashpoints and see each other's characters in the intro cutscenes. These quests are designed for full groups of four, but skilled groups may be able to run them with groups of two or three. The first flashpoint is actually technically designed for only two players. To start a flashpoint this way by walking in, pick which flashpoint you want to run, Find out where the quest giver is using the link in the description of this video, then have your entire group fly to that location on their ships. Right click the quest giver and pick up the veteran quest from the quest giver in the cutscene. You can walk into your first flashpoint together at level 10 once you finish first planet and made your way to the Republic or Imperial fleet. Once you reach level 15, a huge selection of veteran flashpoints on the fleet will become available to you and your group to walk into. 
Once everyone in your group is level 15 and has also finished their second planet of Coruscant or Dromacos and earned their own ship, you'll also have access to walk into the flashpoints you can fly to on other planets. Unfortunately, you can't bring a friend on your ship if they haven't earned their own ship yet. In addition to veteran mode flashpoints, there's also solo flashpoints, and you can often group up for solo flashpoints <laughs> despite the name. Solo flashpoints were originally designed to allow solo players, players playing alone, to experience the story of the flashpoints without needing to put together a group. They also provide the solo player with a super droid that heals them and keeps them alive. Getting into a solo flashpoint with a friend can sometimes be a bit difficult, but it can be done. You both need to be the correct level for the flashpoint or higher, and each flashpoint has a different required level. There are less of these available, but they are a great choice for friends or teams that are not up to the more difficult group flashpoints or who can't find a full group of four to run with. To pick these solo story flashpoints up together, you must first choose one from the list, find out where the quest giver is from the link in the description of this video, and then travel to the quest giver together. When the option to choose which mode shows up at the end of the cutscene, the version you will pick will say Start Story Mode. Low level players may find they do not get this choice. If the Story Mode option is not available, this means either 1. They are not high enough level for the story quest, very common issue, or 2. They might already have a version of the quest picked up in one of the other modes that they need to first drop from their quests. To check that, press L for Log go to the Missions tab, and abandon any quests that have the word Flashpoint in them. Once you have both successfully picked up the solo story quest and can see it in your quest log, have one player run in, wait a few seconds, and have the other player run in after them. You should both load into the same solo story instance, each with your companion, and also each with a helper droid. Nice. You can also try picking up the solo Flashpoints from the Activity Finder. You can open the activity window by clicking the icon of three little people near your minimap, click the solo tab at the top of the panel, and pick the flashpoint of your choice. You'll want to confirm with your friend that they also have that one available, as it will vary by level and you'll miss out on the introductory cutscene with the quest giver, but it will load you in right in front of the door for the flashpoint, which is nice. Operations are another type of group content, but unlike flashpoints, they're designed for groups of 8 or 16 players at level 70 and over, so you'll need to find some additional players to pair up with. You won't want to join any random groups for operations until you've really got a good handle on playing your character and gearing, as they can be a lot more difficult than the solo and veteran flashpoints, and your team will rely on you for playing well a lot more than they would in flashpoints. Players usually put together teams for operations outside of the group finder, even though technically operations do exist in the group finder. Another fun activity you and your friend can do together is PvP, player versus player matches. These aren't for the faint of heart as you'll be matched up against other players, but they can be very chaotic and very fun, especially if you're in voice chat with your friends and can use this to your advantage against the other team. Players often use downtime between matches to duel against each other so they can practice and learn from each other before the next match. You can start a duel by clicking your other player's character, then right-clicking their portrait. You can queue up for matches with up to a group of four, and you'll either be placed into a 4 vs 4 deathmatch, or paired up with other random players to make a group of eight for an objective-spaced match, depending on what the group finder decides is a good match. Before jumping into PvP, I highly recommend your group plays a flashpoint or two first and gets familiar with your character's abilities, including their defensive abilities, their main attack abilities, their interrupt, and any other other useful movement-based abilities. This is because you'll often get matched up with other random players who'll be relying on you to be on their team, so you'll want to know the basics of your class before you jump in. Not to mention, it's just a lot more fun if you aren't button mashing and hoping for the best. As you play, you'll also learn how the different types of matches work, or if you're feeling up to it, you can read about them beforehand. PvP matches are matched by level, so you'll need to make sure you're in the same bracket together. The current brackets are levels 10 through 42, levels 43 through 74, and lastly level 75. To queue up your team for a match, make sure you're all in a group together and are all ready to go, and open the activity window by clicking the icon of three little people near your minimap. Click the PvP tab and queue for unranked war zones. If it says you cannot queue, hover over the button and it'll usually tell you why. If your team is very new, they may not have chosen their combat proficiencies yet, which you can do by pressing K on your keyboard. 
There's also Galactic Starfighter, which is player versus player matches in the sky, which can be started as early as level 1. You can start playing Starfighter by clicking the small icon of a ship near your minimap. That about covers all the main activities the game has set up for you to play with friends. I hope this video is useful to you and I hope you have fun playing with your friends. While the game is extremely solo friendly, I've had a lot of fun playing long distance with friends around the world and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. And as always, may the Force be with you.